Now, uh, is uh, the expression, uh, kill the Jews, free speech? Should that be considered uh, free speech on a university campus? It is unfortunately considered free speech because it's been bandied about on a number of college campuses. I guess the most dramatic example was at the University of Michigan about three years ago during the first of the Palestinian Solidarity Movement conferences uh, when it was um, spoken of in, quote, their closed sessions in that regard. Uh, by conventional standards, uh, meaning state laws, it's considered to be hate speech. But unfortunately, on college campuses, what's happened is that these groups have purposely gone to college campuses because they know there is absolute protection of saying anything you want in the context of having the, quote, intellectual backdrop for doing that mm -hmm. in academia. Uh, to do that in a public or general setting has no weight by them. They get complete protection for saying such noxious items. What are some of the big lies that um, go on in this hate campaign, uh, you know, anti-Semitic hate campaign on universities? What are the big lies that students watching this show should uh, be better informed about? Well, I think some of the canards that we've heard about, such as um, Israel is the oppressor, I Israel is a colonial power. That's kind of bizarre. If anything, if uh, one knows about the history of the formation of the state of Israel, is a fight against colonial powers essentially to establish. They ousted the English. In, in, ousting the English in, in that regard. So it's really kind of bizarre to hear that after a fashion. The other is uh, pictorially representing uh, IDF troops as basically the contemporary equivalent of uh, Nazi storm stormtroopers in that regard. Uh, the other more heinous aspects of it are uh, showing uh, cartoon-like videos that portray Sharon and, for that matter, any other Israeli leader as basically perpetrating something that's really pretty reprehensible. That's the medieval blood libels in that regard. Um, in Arabic, something called Daka Kola um, is basically the bottling of uh, Christian and, and Arab blood essentially to be sold on the open market by Jews. I mean, that's pretty highness, but that's shown frequently in college it's campuses. It's very Kafka-esque. I mean, uh, <laughs> to say I'm a rabbi, uh, right. and one of the, the tractates I learned was the tractate of blood, how we uh, salt our meat because we're not allowed to eat uh, topical blood on um, kosher food. Right. Uh, and certainly the um, consumption of human blood is uh, completely for forbidden. Um, these characters, like Frankenstein, aren't these kind of, um, or, or the vampire, aren't these kind of uh, sort of uh, anti-Semitic characters that came out of uh, Europe? They did come out of, an of Europe, and ironically, um, in some strange ways, they came out of uh, late 19th century France during the Dreyfus period, where there were wars going on in the French newspapers uh, about characterizing Jews as being the equivalent of that. Uh, and they've just been unfortunately carried over. In the case of Nazi Germany, you had uh, Julius uh, Stryker and the infamous Der Sturmer, who had created uh, visual cartoonish images, essentially, of Jews doing that. And then mm -hmm. there's the famous Nazi propaganda film, um, The Jew Seuss, uh, about a, uh, an 18th century uh, Hofhüter or Stadtland, as it's known in Ivrit, uh, who basically subsequently was killed by one of the electors. Because? Because basically he, um, quote, got too uppity mm -hmm. in that regard. Mm -hmm. So these are these very bizarre kinds of things, uh, and it's a very weird kind of racism, anti-Semitism. It's, it's very insidious. It's, it's very extreme. Um, I think, and the, I think uh, the other aspect of it is that um, I think very few people, Jews among them, realize that the term anti-Semitism really had its origins in a party in Vienna during the final period in the 19th century that unfortunately uh, under the Austro-Hungarian Empire led to an anti-Semitic party leader becoming the mayor of Vienna for several years in that regard. Mm -hmm. And really I think the appropriate term of art is Jew hatred because it really is primal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, all right. How does this uh, thing work? Who are the players? Who are the uh, ones that are uh, proliferating this gobbledygook? 
Well, you've got a number of different um, organizations who are purveying this kind of hate out there. Um, patently, the one that operates on college campuses is something called the Palestinian Solidarity Movement. Mm -hmm. that was established uh, basically about four or five years ago. Um, while it denies it, it, it does have a connection with the combination of the International Solidarity Movement, and it also has some uh, backing from certain Arab countries and some allegations that basically it also gets some support from Fatah. Really? Yes. Now, uh, the idea of a Palestinian solidarity movement, uh, in theory, is not bad. I mean, most Israelis would like the Palestinians to be content with a state in some part of um, that region. Um, some um, feel that that would be a haven for uh, another terrorist uh, uh, spot another terrorist uh, center, but um, I mean certainly if there was a content Palestinian people living in somewhere in that region it would be in the interest of everyone. So what after all is wrong with an organization called the Palestinian Solidarity Movement? I think there are a couple things wrong with it. Firstly it perpetrates a uh, line that indicates that Israel has no right to be on what they consider as Palestinian territory. They view Palestinian territory as that space that Israel occupies between the Mediterranean and the, and the Jordan River, after a fashion. Uh, the more virulent of them indicate that Jews should leave, just like the Hamas ag mm -hmm. arguments. Go back to Poland, go back to Miami Beach, after a fashion. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Then they also um, try and tie Israel and the United States together as um, draconian, colonialist military powers in the Middle East. In fact, you'll hear frequently the representation by, of all people, Noam Chomsky on campuses that effectively Israel is nothing more, nothing less than a military base for the United States in the Middle East. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, the United States does have soldiers all over the world. We are a superpower. Uh, why d d is that claim um, not uh, substantial? Well, it's not substantial because, firstly, Israel's uh, defense forces exist for the protection of all of its citizens, mm -hmm. Jews, Christians, Muslim, Druze, you name it. But on the American side, uh, you know... Uh, the Americans have never had a position going as far back as the end of World War I of inveighing themselves as the next succeeding colonial power in this world. If anything, ironically, the United Nations was established uh, towards the close of World War II as a means of transitioning away from, quote, the older colonial period in which European powers held sway throughout much of the underdeveloped world. Mm -hmm. So it's totally illegitimate in, in describing essentially the U.S. interests in the world. Okay. So you view the, the U.S. Uh, certainly having a presence in the world, um, but a uh, benign presence and a, a being a country that's trying to do good, good in the world? I would say that unequivocally yeah. in that regard. Uh, so that's not what is being said, by the way, on these college campuses. Yeah. Things like um, democracy, having a, a voice uh, for minorities, you know, members of, let's say, um, uh, people, uh, minorities living in Iraq, Correct. Uh, how about the Kurds uh, in the northern part of the country? Um, elections, free elections. Uh, the idea of democracy, uh, freedom of speech, uh, without being uh, terrorized that you're going to be killed for speaking. Speaking of which, uh, recently Theo Van Gogh was murdered for uh, expressing himself freely in a film regarding his critique of uh, Islamic society, Islamic uh, treatment of women. Correct. Uh, he is the uh, grandson, um, or the I guess it would be the, the nephew of the famous artist. He's really, Van Gogh. he's really the grand nephew, if you will, grand of nephew, yeah. uh, Vincent Van Gogh. He's really named after his uh, grandfather, Theo Van Gogh, who was the art dealer brother of Vincent. Mm 